Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. A few months ago, I dyed a warp for Nikki's V cowl. The link is in the i card above. I had thrown another warp in the pan at the same time, a beautiful merino silk blend. So I'm feeling a little stuck. I know I want to weave this beautiful warp here and that this will be the weft. I'll dye it to, to be complementary to this. Um, and I'm just having trouble trying to figure out what pattern I want to do. And I keep, you know, jumping between different ones that I want to try. So what I've done is I've decided I'm going to do something from this book, which um, I've been just sort of flipping through and enjoying for quite a few months now. And I'm just going to choose a basic, you know, something like this from the book. We'll thread the reed. There are two uh, warp chains here, but uh, very similar in uh, numbers. One is 63 and one is 68. So I'm just going to thread the reed from the front. Uh, five from one chain, five from the other until I've gone through the whole thing and then afterwards I will decide uh, what the weft will look like and what exact pattern I'll be treadling and weaving this at. I put this simple draft into my iWeaveIt software and I'll make it available to my patrons on Patreon. So I went to the computer and I made up the draft, which is from a Nicely's book here. So I put it in the weaving software and um, I wanted to see what it would look like um, on the loom. So this these pictures are the wet finishing of uh, various uh, color options for the treadling. But, uh, on the loom, it'll look more or less like this, depending on what color uh, weft I use, obviously. I think my stripes are going to be uh, much uh, more subtle than what we see here because I'm using a dyed warp. So the, the stripes will come and go, um, change, and um, at times blend in with the weft. So, um, and there'll be tiny little stripes, only five threads long. So I have my two uh, warp chains on the loom. There, this is the cross marked with a string, which is what I do to uh, mark the cross um, before I put them um, in the dye pot. So uh, the two chains, which will which have the same colors, but the colors will be in different places along the length. This will be quite a narrow scarf because I'm not going to add um, another color. And I will thread them through the reed here. This is how I attach the uh, the reed so that it doesn't move around. The whole beater um, is firm. It's just uh, I have permanent shoelaces tied onto the castle there and then I just twist them around here and tie a bow tie at the front. I do that at both ends so that I don't have um, any warp warp issues. Um, you know, I don't introduce a, um, any torque into the, the beater, keep it straight. So uh, I'm going to design this in the reed by threading these through and then we'll put them through the, uh, the heddles after. Front to back. So while I'm threading up the loom, I'm going to dye this skein of Malabrigo. It's baby silk paca and 70% baby alpaca and 30% silk. And this is a wonderful soft uh, yarn. I've used it a, a few times already and I love the, the finished uh, product. So this is just 50 grams, which is enough for weft for uh, one scarf. This is a narrow scarf, so this should be enough. For that and I'm just going to uh, dye it up in the pot in a nice coordinating color. I'm going to use a combination of my blue spruce which is a green 
and the bright blue. I'm going to use the bright blue because this is old. It's gotten um, a little bit crusty and I think this is a good way to rinse out this jar and uh, get some new lids uh, for this one. So we'll use the remains of this bright blue and put that in the pot first and then uh, add blue spruce um, maybe after the yarn is in. I'll see. Okay, so I dissolved the the contents of that jar and it dissolved quite well um, into the pot along with uh, about 12 cups of water. Maybe I'll add a bit more water and I'm going to turn the heat on. I'm going to add the yarn um, as it's heating up. Lots of room in the pot for the yarn to move around. There's about 16 cups of water and there's one tablespoon of citric acid uh, crystals in there. What I don't know is how much dye is in there since I was just using the crud out of the bottom of my stock jar. But it looks like a pretty nice color, like it's uh, got pretty good depth already. So I'm going to add the yarn before it gets too hot so there's not too much of a shock. It's been partially soaked. I can see that there's areas where it's still a little on the pale side, which means it, it hasn't been soaked through, which is okay. We're going to get a, a nice uh, variation in color, which is what I want. Oh yeah, I can see a little bit of residue in there floating around, but if that's still there um, at the end, it I'll just wash it out. Not a problem. It's a beautiful blue. I don't know how deep it's going to get. I'll wait for a little bit, and then I'm going to add some of this uh, blue spruce color. And it's been about 15 minutes, and it's a nice color. So I'm going to leave it in there. It's heating up. I can feel it heating up, but not at a boil yet. And let's see. Let's open this up. This loop up around the outside of the pot. And then I'm going to drop a teaspoon of blue spruce into the middle. And it's splashing because this is also an old jar where the lid is not doing well. So when that gets emptied, it will be getting a new jar and lid. There's a teaspoon of green blue spruce added and we'll see how much pigment that is and whether I'm going to want some more after the fact. You can probably see that there's some variation in there, which is just what I'm looking for. A variation between the blues and the greens. And right now we're waiting uh, for that water to clear and enter in, the color to enter into the yarn. So I'm just gonna let it go. Um, it's just simmering. So we're gonna let it go for about 20 minutes and then take a look at what the water looks like then. Okay, it's steaming up a little bit, but I'm really happy with this color. It's a gorgeous color, a blue leaning towards teal. And so um, it's been on for hmm, quite a while. 
probably close to an hour total. We still have a fair amount of color in the water, but I think that if I just leave it, turn off the heat and let it cool down on its own, that it may uh, draw the rest of the color into the yarn. And the water is cool. And the color is all in the yarn. So yeah, leaving it to cool down in the pot worked quite well for that. Oh, I love this color. So what was that? A, a uh, bright blue with a shot of blue spruce. Just look at that color. Oh, it looks tangled, but it's not. It's held well, and uh, once it's washed and dried, give it a couple of good tugs, and that helps it to behave itself. Thread under tension is a thread under control. I love this color. That is exactly my favorite color right there. And there's some nuances in it, some light areas, some darker areas, some slightly greener and blue areas. So gorgeous. I'm going to wash this and hang it to dry. And uh, it might even be ready, uh, dry and ready to use tomorrow. So here's my completed dyed weft. Hmm, on my screen, it looks like a, a fairly light blue, whereas in reality, it's a deep teal. So hopefully in processing we get uh, the right color. But this is a wonderfully feeling alpaca silk combination. So this is going to go really well with the mohair and silk warp that is going on the loom right now. Mm, this is going to be a pleasure to weave with. Once I got it on the loom, I realized that it would be beneficial to reverse the tie up. I found it easier to lower three shafts rather than raise three shafts, and therefore I had weft floats instead of warp floats showing, unlike the draft. I'm at the end of the weaving, and now I'm hem stitching in groups of eight. This is double time, I'm not this fast. I take the last piece of my hem stitching yarn and I put it through the knot and I keep it and I incorporate it into the fringe just to secure it. So the scarf's off the loom. Right now it's just laid out here on the floor in my studio. And it's measured out to 78 and a half I think inches long. So we can see the threads have already started to move around a little bit now that uh, the tension is off and we're starting to see a bit of the huck lace pattern as the threads bend and move, sort of make almost um, circular shape there. But it will do so even more once I wet finish, so that's going to happen next. and. I should say that it feels wonderful and lightweight and, and drapey already so far. So I'm going to twist these fringes to keep them neat and uh, pretty. And then uh, I'll wet finish after the twisting. At the sink for some wet finishing. And you can see how the threads have slid around already and moving into place. This is why wet finishing is so important. This is where the huck look comes out. And all I've done is soak it so far. I'll be um, tossing it about, beating it uh, against the side of the sink for a bit. It doesn't need to be babied at all. It needs to be fulled as much as it can. So uh, yeah, just thought 
be interesting to see how the threads are already moving around and sliding into place. So I will continue with the wet finishing. This is hot water, by the way. Um, I'll continue with the wet finishing and then we'll take another look at it after it's dried and pressed. The finished scarf is absolutely gorgeous. The threads moved around and opened up these gorgeous little holes and created an amazing pattern where the threads kind of bend in and out. The color changes are fascinating. The, uh, the blue and the green and the purple mix at different places, like they change their colors down the length of the scarf. So what was blue is green and what was green is purple and mmm. And there's that slight little sheen of silk. Absolutely gorgeous. And the drape is wonderful. It feels so soft and drapey, very light, but I'm sure it's warm. There you can see the sheen. So a very successful project. I think I'm going to make more with similar yarns, same pattern. Love this pattern. I loved weaving it and I love dyeing for it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment below if you have any questions. Also consider becoming part of my Patreon if you'd like to help support me as I make more videos just like this. Thank you for watching.